So this is question five for 2507 summer 2020 set one. And in this circuit, we have three voltage sources. One is 10 volts up here. Another one is 20 volts here. Another one minus five volts down here. So in part A, we have to use superposition theorem to calculate the current I. So we need to figure out what's the value of this current. And in part B, we have to use simultaneous equations like could be like K, KVL to basically find that current again. So for the first part, uh, let's uh, use superposition. So let's start with the 10 volt voltage source and then we just have to turn off the minus 5 volts and the 20 volts. So to turn off voltage sources, you, for, to apply superposition, we basically short circuit the voltage sources that we are not interested in. And then we find the contribution of the first voltage, 10 volts to I, which is going to be I1, okay? So in this case, if we apply the short circuit to minus 5 and 20 volts, we get a circuit that looks like this. So we have the voltage source here, right? Then we have the 5K, and then we have a here, the 5k again with the 20k here sorry not 20k 15k okay so this is 15k this is 5k this is 5k this is the ground again now we need to calculate the current i1 that's flowing here so that's the first contribution so to calculate that current we can basically use a voltage divider to calculate the voltage applied across this 5k ohm and then once we know the voltage, so we calculate this voltage here, right? And once we know that voltage, then we can calculate using Ohm's law, the value of the current I1. So how do we calculate this voltage V1, okay? So this voltage V1 is going to be equals to the 10 volts times, because we, know to, we want to know what's the voltage applied across this parallel between 5K and 15K, we have to use the parallel of 5k and 15k in order to get v1. It's just it's not just times 5k divided by 5k plus 5k here. So uh, we use this uh, notation here. So it's going to be 5k in parallel. So this double forward slash here means parallel with 15k, right? Divided by 5k in parallel with 15k plus that 5k up there. So that's the, the voltage. And remember that this parallel here, because we have like just two resistance, it corresponds to an equivalent resistance. So our Q1, that's equals to 5k times 15k divided by 5k times 15k, okay? So if we plug in this notation here, so this is the same as 5k in parallel with 15k. Okay, so if we plug in back this here in equation V1, we basically get a voltage V1 that's equals to 4.28 volts. Okay, now because we know this voltage, we can use Ohm's law to calculate the current I1. So the current I1 is going to be that voltage because they are in parallel, right? So we calculate this V1 here, right? So because 5k is in parallel with 15k, so they have the same voltage if you want to apply across them. So it's going to be V1 divided by the resistance, so which in our case is 5k. So this is equals to that 4.28 volts divided by the resistance, which is 5k. Okay, and this gives us a current I1 that's equals to 0 0.8571 milliamperes. Okay, so that's the, the first case. Now for the second case, uh, we can analyze the contribution of the 20 volts voltage source up here. Okay, so in this case, if we redraw the circuit, we would have a voltage source here that is 20 volts. Then we have the 15K here. And now we have 5K in parallel with 5K.
and let's say that this is the current that we want to determine. So we can again calculate the voltage here. That let's call this V2, right? So ground. Once we know V2, we divide that by 5k, and then we get that one ampere again. So one thing that you have to be careful is that look at the direction of the current here, right? So the current it's going downwards, right? So we always have to consider to calculate the, the value of the current. We always have to calculate that current fo flowing in the same direction. So because we are short circuiting minus 5 and 20 in the first case, if if we look at the voltage, so it's 10 volts here, current always flows from the positive sign convention from the highest potential to the lowest potential. So if this is a ground in the first case, current will flow in this direction, right? So the current I1 that we calculated first agrees with the direction of this I. For the second case, we just short circuit here, right? Short circuit this one here. So the 20 volts voltage source, we have a current that flow in this direction. It splits into two currents here. One part goes there and another one goes here. So again, it agrees with the direction of I. Now, if you look at the minus five volts here, so if we if we ground now the 20 and the 10 here, basically the current will flow. So suppose this one here is zero volts, right? And this one here is minus five. So again, we will have some current that flow in this direction here, in this direction here, then they add up at this node here, and then it would flow from this voltage, which probably is higher than minus five because here is zero and here is zero. So we have like a net current here that corresponds to the third contribution that also flows in the same direction of I. But you always have to be careful with the directions of the current assigned by the problem, okay? Or even when you are solving some specific problem, you have to be careful with the direction of the currents, okay? So let's continue with the second part. So now we just have to calculate V2. So V2 here is equals, so we have now 20 volts, so it's going to be 20 right, times the, the parallel between 5k and 5k. And now because I know that, I mean, we know that 5k in parallel with 5k, because they have like the same resistance, it's going to be half of that resistance because we have two resistors with the same values in parallel. So half of that is going to be 2k. So you can verify that once you, on your, on your solution. So if you calculate 5k times 5k divided by 5k plus 5k, that's going to give you the 2.5, sorry, not 2, 2.5 k here. So 2.5 k. And then we just add those 2.5 k plus the 15 k that we have up here, right? So this gives us a V2 of 2.8571 volts. Now to calculate the current that I'm calling I2, that's the same as V2 divided by 5K. So this is equals to 2.8571 divided by 5K. And this is 0.57143 milliamps. Okay, for the third part, it's just the same, but now we basically ground the 10 volts and the we short circuit the 10 volts voltage source and the 20 volts voltage source. So in this case, we have, look at the drawing now. So we have a minus 5 volts here, right? So remember that is negative applied to that node. And because I'm, so it could be like this way or minus here, right? but then I have to reverse the polarity of the voltage source here, okay? But I like to do the other way because, so let me go back. I like to do the other way because then we just have to, let me go down there. We just have to, sorry. Just, just erase this one here. So this is five here. Sorry about my dog.
so it's five volts here and then we are just changing the polarity so minus and plus then we have the 5k now here right because it's connected to this node here and then we have now in parallel here 5k and 15k so again the procedure is basically the same so we just have to we just have to to calculate the voltage across this parallel right this voltage here and then we calc sorry actually in this case we need to calculate the voltage here right so the voltage here and then we calculate this current here which corresponds to i3 okay so in this case we just have to take so v3 is going to be equals to the 5 volts and i'm using 5 here because i'm assigning the the direction of the current flowing from the the highest potential to the lowest potential okay so if we take the difference here we it would be uh, those 5 volts applied so it's 5 times now because we want to know the voltage across the 5k here we multiply by the 5k and then we divide by those same 5k plus the parallel of 15k and 5k so this is 5k times 15k divided by 5k plus 15k and this gives us a v3 equals to two point again 2.8571 volts which gives us an i3 of 0 0.57143 milliamps okay now the current the total current i is the sum of i1 plus i3 because that's the superposition plus i2 here so i is equals to 2 milliamps so if we add those values of currents that's the answer that we get so this is applying superposition now let's see the circuit um, for part two which basically or part b which is basically using the simultaneous equations so if you look at this circuit here we can apply kvl and then we would have so we can have a current flowing here that i can call so let me see the one that i've used in my notes here so for i used ia so let's call this one here ia and then we might end up having like another current flowing here clockwise again that I call IB okay so if we redraw the circuit here let me redraw the circuit so we have plus minus then we have a, a resistor here that is 5k then we have another resistor here that it's the same 5k here we have a voltage source that is 5 volts this one here is 10 volts right they are connected here and then we have another 15k here and a voltage source here so this is 20 volts right and this is 15k Oops. okay and again we have clockwise ia here clockwise I be here now if we use kv kvl and on the no on the mesh one and or a and b so for the first mesh remember that we are interested in this current here right so what's i in terms of i a and i b so i is equals to i a because it's flowing in the same direction as i minus i b because you see here i b is flowing clockwise so it goes all this way up here right so it's flowing in the opposite direction as the assigned i so it's minus ib so once we know i a and ib we just have to take that difference to calculate i so for the first mesh we have so let me go down here so we have minus 10 volts 
okay, plus I A times five K plus I A times again five K minus I B times five K minus five volts and that should be equal to zero. For the second mesh we have plus five volts plus I B times five K minus I A times five K plus I B times fifteen K plus twenty volts and that should be equal to zero. Now if we isolate the terms IA and IB we can rewrite this set of equations as a matrix form. Okay, so we can write this way here. So IA IB equals to some values here. Okay, so for the first row, it corresponds to the first equation. So we have for IA, we have 5K multiplying here, 5K multiplying here, and that's it, right? So it's just 10K for the first element here. For IB, we only have minus 5K here, right? So it's minus 5K here. Now this minus 10 here, it goes to the right hand side here, right? so becomes positive so it's 10 volts and so let me just it's minus 10 there for the 10 volts both thirds and minus 5 here so it becomes 15 volts along with this 5 volts there for the second equation we have minus 5k here for ia so that's it for ia and we have 5k here for ab 15k here so it's 20k for IB and then this plus 5 volts plus this 20 volts goes to the right hand side as minus 25 volts so if we solve this equation this system of equations here we basically find that IA is equals to 1 milliampere and that IB is equals to minus 1 milliampere Okay, and then remember that the current I is equals to IA minus IB, right? So this is the same as one milliampere minus minus one milliampere, and that's the same two milliampere that we calculated using this superposition. Okay, so that's it for this problem.